Okay, so get this. We're like knee deep in all things Eras Tour. Right. right. All these articles you guys keep sending. And bam, out of nowhere, Taylor Swift drops this surprise duet with Sabrina Carpenter <laughs> in New Orleans. And like the whole internet freaks out. Yeah. It was huge. I know. I saw it. I was like, wait a second. Hold on. Right. What's happening here? So, of course, we got to deep dive into this whole thing. So, October 26th, Eras Tour hits New Orleans. And let me tell you, fans got way more than just another show. For sure. I mean, whether you're like a full-on Swifty or just a casual fan, or maybe you're sitting there scratching your head like, what's all hype about? We've got something for everybody in this deep dive. Absolutely. So, let's jump right in. Let's do it. I got to start with the duet itself. The energy was insane. Like, electric... The whole place was buzzing. I'll bet. And the song choices. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. They mashed up Carpenter's Espresso. <laughs> and please, please, please with Swift's Is It Over Now? And they even snuck in a little bit of 1989 Taylor's version. Oh. Which, by the way, for anyone who's been living under a rock is like Taylor's whole thing where she's re-recording her earlier albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's taking back ownership of her music. It's amazing. It's powerful stuff. Yeah. So what do you think about that mashup? Okay, so that mashup was seriously clever. Like, genius-level stuff, right? Yeah, why? Okay, think about it. Espresso is this total pop anthem, like, makes you want to get up and dance. It's all about moving, uh, like, owning your independence. And then you've got Is It Over Now, which is way more, like, melancholic, ballad you know, heartbreak vibes. Right, I like that classic Taylor ballad. <laughs> exactly. And both songs are about like relationships ending, right? But Espresso has that sassy I'm moving on energy and Is It Over Now is more like the raw emotion of it. Totally. And then they throw in 1989, which ties it all back to Taylor's own journey as an artist. It's like a conversation between their musical styles and their personal stories all in one. It's true. It's like layers upon layers. And this is what I think is so cool about this whole thing. It's not just two random pop stars thrown together for a quick collab. Mm -hmm. These two, they have history. Serena opened for Taylor, like, way back in the day. Really? Yeah. That's cool. I didn't know that. We're talking London, Tokyo, like, mm -hmm. all over the globe. And they even did a duet back then of Love Story. It was a whole thing. Wow, that's crazy. Right? So, like, this New Orleans moment, it's, like, full circle. It's this whole journey of growth and support that they've been on together which I think really resonates with fans, you know? Absolutely. It adds this whole other dimension to the performance. It's like seeing these two artists who have known each other for years come back together on this massive stage, and it's like, yeah. you know, they've both evolved, they've both grown, and they're still supporting each other, and that's something you don't always see, you know, in the music industry. Yeah, especially in a cutthroat industry like that. Yeah. It's nice to see that kind of genuine connection. Oh, totally. And speaking of connection, did you see all the, like, friendship bracelets and the little inside jokes they were throwing around? Oh, my God, yes. Look, uh -huh. they were just two friends hanging out, jamming out on stage. Oh, right. It felt so authentic, so real. Exactly. But then there's the whole theatrical aspect of it, too. Yeah. The way Taylor, like, calls Sabrina on stage mm -hmm. and Sabrina's all, give me five seconds. And then, poof, she appears from under the stage. Yeah. Like, what was that about? I know, right? It was like a magic trick. Totally. It was brilliant, though. The whole staging just, like, amps up the experience, you know? It's yeah. like you've got the surprise factor, the anticipation, the fans are going wild, and it just makes this lasting memory, you know? They're not just watching a performance. They're part of this unique, spontaneous moment. It's true. It's like the energy in the room is just so different when, you know, something unexpected can happen. Absolutely. You're on the edge of your seat the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think this is, like, a new trend in music? I was just going to ask you that. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see more of these surprise collaborations? I think so. It makes sense, right? Yeah. Like, think about how fandom works now, especially with social media. These spontaneous moments, they create instant buzz. And it feels more authentic, more personal than, like, a planned collab, you know? It does. It feels like you're getting a glimpse into this genuine connection between artists. Yeah, exactly. It's like a peek behind the curtain. So, to sum it all up, We've got the surprise factor, the clever song choices, the history between Taylor and Sabrina and the fans going absolutely bonkers. It's no wonder this whole thing blew up the internet. It was the perfect storm, yeah, right? Absolutely. It makes you wonder, like, where is pop music headed? Are we going to see more of this, like, genuine collaboration and connection between artists? Are these surprise moments the new norm? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. It's definitely something to think about. And, hey, maybe just maybe this isn't the last time we'll see Taylor and Sabrina sharing the stage. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for sure. That would be awesome. Thanks for diving into this with me. Yeah, this was fun. Until next time. See ya.